So this week, the Warriors are working out a bunch of players who could potentially fill that last roster spot. Some of them kind of intriguing, some of them not so much. Let's go down the list and talk about each one of these guys. And then later on, I want to talk about something else that I think needs to be addressed and, in my opinion, is a little bit disturbing within the organization. You probably can guess what it is. But l- let's start with some of these names here. Um, how about a former warrior in Kent Bazemore? Remember when Kent Bazemore, after that rough Kelly Oubre, Steph injury season, uh, said, oh, I'm going to go sign with the Lakers for less because... I want a chance at a championship, right? And then y'all know what happened after that, right? And he was sick. He was sick. He tweeted it out. I, I respect that Bayes, you know, uh, interacts with fans and, you know, is, is out there on social media. But yeah, he chose wrong, needless to say. But obviously, he was also a warrior two times over, right? And is one of Steph Curry's very close friends. In fact, the reason that Steph actually ended up with Under Armour, I don't know if that's a good or a bad thing. I guess it's good for his pockets, right? Um, Here's what I'll say about Ken Bazemore. He's 34 years old. He was in training camp with the Kings last season and didn't make the roster. So that doesn't sound great, right? But having a year off, are his legs and his body charged up, right? Could that year off have done him well as far as where he is at in his career with his body? He's also one of the players, I remember, I think it was on Andre's podcast, he is super into taking care of his body. He was one of those guys that was like way ahead of his time with it, with the the, the massage gun, and he's just, he's obsessed with Uh, prolonging his athleticism and taking care of his body. So I think that bodes well for him at this point in his career. And again, having a year off, he basically, you could get a Bazemore with some super fresh legs. He knows the system. You know what he's going to bring to the locker room and and, and, and that type of energy and raw, raw spirit off the bench. And, you know, he's a defensive wing who can shoot the three. Now, my knock, my, my, my problem with Bazemore was at least in that, was it 19 season, 20 season? Granted, the context of that season was there was no Steph Curry and they weren't a playoff team, but he did take some irrational shots, right? There was times where it was like he would make a great play defensively and then he'd take a bad shot offensively, right? And you want him to clean that ratio up, but you imagine being a part of this roster, I think he would be more conservative with his shot selection and he'd focus on being a defender and a weak side attacker. So Kent Bazemore, I definitely think is a possibility when you consider the relationships within the organization uh, and the institutional knowledge, and then uh, the position that he plays, a defensive wing. Speaking of another 3 and D wing, how about Tony Snell? Is another guy they're bringing in, 31 years old, uh, played a little bit with the Pelicans last year, was in Detroit for a while, 40% three-point shooter, solid defender, doesn't bring the energy that Bazemore brings, right? I think, you know, Bazemore's greatest attribute is his motor and his energy, and he can lift everyone on the floor with that. Snell doesn't play with that motor, but he's a more efficient 3 and D guard. He's younger. He's 31 years old. However, do you want to look at that brother for an entire season? Because I know I don't. I'm just saying. I'm just saying. <laughs> so Tony Snell's being brought in, but he makes sense. Uh, a vet 3 and D wing. Um, Juan Toscano Anderson, JTA, 30 years old already. And remember when the Lakers made the deal with the Utah, he was a part of that package, went to the jazz and finished out the year there. They obviously didn't pick up his, I don't know if he had an offer sheet or a, a, a team option or what it was, but he's a free agent and they're going to give Juan another shot. Now he would be probably the best locker room guy, right? We know the cultural fit. And I think that also he could possibly be that bridge from the youth to the the vets, right? He's right at 30 years old. He knows both of them, but he's still young enough and knows the young guys that he could be that good bridge voice guy in the locker room. But as far as like on the court goes, listen, man, I love the Juan T story and he proved me wrong. Listen, he's been in the league longer than I thought he would be, you know, And, and so respect to him. But to me, he's always been a tweener in in a bad way where he's really a forward, but he's not big enough to be a forward, and he's not quick enough to be a guard. Something we were talking about with Moody, and seems like he's figured that out. Juan was in that same boat, but Juan's not nearly the shooter Moody is, right? The offensive player. And so 
I, listen, we all love JTA as far as just being that guy and being that. I, I don't know if you want to use your last roster spot on a guy that you're not planning on playing when it matters. But then again, you say, well, you're only going to go seven, eight deep in the playoffs, Alki. Maybe it won't matter. But yeah, I see Juan more as just a, a, a cultural builder and a character fit rather than an on-court asset at this point. Here's an intriguing name for you. Harry Giles. Harry Giles, at one point, the number one recruit in the country at Duke, blew both his knees out. Kings took a flyer on him. You probably remember him in Sacramento. I think they took him 20th. It's one of those stories like a Michael Porter Jr. or a Patrick Baldwin Jr. It's that same story. The number one recruit in high school, injuries plagued him. The Kings took a flyer on him. He was there for a while, but he could not stay healthy. He was in Portland in the 21 season, and they had to shut him down. Another injury. Now, he's been in the G League the last two years, and in March, they had to shut him down again. Like the knees, it, it's, it was never a question of talent. The kid, when I first saw him, I was like, yo, he reminds me of, of KG. He, you could tell like he idolized KG, I'm guessing, but you could tell he watched a lot of Kevin Garnett as a kid just in his body language and the way his, his energy on the court. Uh, great hands, great motor, great touch. He has the full offensive bag. He just can't stay on the court. But he's again trying to make a comeback. 6'10", 7'3", wingspan. Would the Warriors say, hey, let's take a gamble with Rick Salbrini and this medical staff, we've done it before. We've taken guys that couldn't stay healthy and they've stayed healthy for us under our management, our, our game management, our, our load management and our training staff because out of all these names here that I'm gonna talk to you about, the ceiling on Harry Giles is way above anybody else's here. And so it would be a high risk, high reward uh, chance on a big who is just highly skilled and still just 25 years old so, you know, I, I hope he can, wherever, whether it's with the Warriors or not, I hope he gets another shot to stay healthy and show what he can do. But uh, he will be brought in for a workout. How about a little guy here, Trey Burke? Trey Burke is 30 years old, Allen Iverson clone, right? You know, he the braids, and you could see, you talk about influence on a game. He has that nasty crossover. Now, Trey Burke, a uh, uh, Michigan. I, I remember it. Was it at Michigan? He was. He was nice at Michigan, but anyway, he didn't really have a breakout. Remember Bubble Burke? Remember Dallas? He he broke out for the Mavericks in the bubble as just a go getter. Here, you got to excuse me. I thought I put this at a. Okay, yeah, minimum day. I got to go pick up the the little one here. But anyway, um, he had a big coming out party. It, it, I think he was on a like a, a ten day. And they just kept signing him. And so he's been in Dallas for a few years now, but he hasn't been in the rotation and they haven't extended him. And so they're bringing him in now at 30 years old, a, a, you know, a five foot 12 guard that relies on quickness. I'm not sure that that's a, a, a wise decision. 30 is not too old these days. If he takes care of his body, I think he still probably has pop. What he would provide is that Jordan pool role as instant offense off the bench. Things aren't going well. Hey, come in, get on the ball, pick and roll and just create shots. Get going. That would be Trey Burke's role uh, for the Warriors. Another guard, Dion Waiters. Dion Waiters is 31 years old now. Do y'all remember he was Jerry West's guy? He was in the Harrison Barnes draft, and Jerry West swore up and down, this guy was him. We need to get him. If I recall, don't quote me on this, I think the Cavs took him before Barnes anyway. He went like third or fourth. He went way too high. Um, and no one's ever questioned the talent. It's been the, the attitude and the discipline to stay in shape. He's a big body, right? He built like, he's like an out of shape D Wade as far as like his built, but big bag. Did he play at Syracuse? I think it was Syracuse, right? Just a big bully guard. The last time we saw him in the league was with the Lakers in the bubble. They had brought him in. And I talked about ceilings. You know, this guy's ceiling is up there too. But at this point, you know, uh, listen, I, I don't think there's a chance in hell. I, I, and that's not fair to say to somebody, a dude can mature and, and, and grow as a person. But when you look at the moves the Warriors are making to, to make this one cohesive, cohesive unit and kind of uh, clean up the culture. I don't think he's a guy you bring in. Whether he's a changed man or not, I don't think you risk it and bring him in at this stage in his career. He's been out of the league for like three years. Another former Warrior player, how about Glenn Robinson the third? 
took a break from the league last year, which, hey, all the power to you in today's society and people want their their mental health and all this stuff. But when a guy takes a break from the league and it's not because of their body and injuries, it's a little strange to me. But listen, I, I wouldn't be mad. I don't think anybody would be mad at bringing Glenn Robinson back because the locker room loved him. The coaches love him, the institutional knowledge. And I also think that he is a guy that you could play minutes in a playoff game. You know, you don't want to start him. Obviously, we're not talking about that. We're talking about a set, but he is a guy. You're in a jam or somebody's in foul trouble. He could get you 10, 12 minutes in a playoff game. He has that type of experience, big enough body, solid enough defender, and again, already knows the system. And so if I'm looking at these names here and I'm and I was I was a betting man, stay tuned. I got I got some stuff about that uh coming up here soon, but he might he might be my favorite just because of the the overall fit and uh how old is he he's just 30 right one more name for you michael carter williams you know how i know i'm getting old he's 31 i remember when he had that rookie of the year campaign for the sixers it was maybe the weakest rookie of the year campaign of all time i don't know it's subjective right he's been in orlando he's had several opportunities around the league like people like him and they're intrigued with his size at the point guard position. He finally caught on with the magic the last few years, but for whatever reason, uh, well, I won't say for whatever reason, he, he had an ankle injury early in the year last year for Orlando, and by the time he got back, he never cracked the rotation. You look at their backcourt, Fultz, Suggs, Cole Anthony, right? He couldn't get past those guys in play, so he's no longer in Orlando, but he seems like a Warriors type of player high IQ, length, versatile defender. And he could he be Sean Livingston 2.0? Now, I don't want to disrespect S. Dot because I think S. Dot had a really good career and, and was a better player at this point, right? But he would fit that mold of just a big, versatile guard, smart guard in control, set the table, guard multiple positions. And that could be something that you know, is in the back of the Warriors' minds when, they, when they're bringing him in here. Now, the question would be, can you really clog spacing with a guard, right? We're always talking about the fit with Draymond, Looney, Kaminga, right? Could, can he play minutes at the guard spot if he's not really a three-point shooter? He'll shoot it, but he ain't going to be guarded out there, right? So that could be an issue. There was another name, Xavier Moon. Never heard of, bro. Not even going to speak on it. Never heard of him. Hey, if he if he gets invited to camp, then I'll be forced to learn who he is. So prove me wrong. Now, I think the question is, do the Warriors really have an intention of filling that last roster spot? We all know the tax manipulation and cost that it that it, they're trying to manipulate. Are they just doing their due diligence by bringing these guys in? And if someone really popped, then maybe they'd consider it. Perhaps they're just doing favors to, for some of these guys, right? Former Warriors, like, hey, we'll take a look at you. Maybe somebody else will, like as a gesture. But speaking of gestures, Jace Johnson is a camp invite, and he was their center for the Santa Cruz Warriors last year and played in Summer League. And someone had brought up to me just before Summer League, hey, keep an eye on Jace Johnson. He led the G League in rebounding. He's a seven-footer. And so I thoroughly watched every Warrior Summer League game, watched it twice over, coverage, all that. I was there, not feeling it, not feeling it. I, there's no other way to put it. I, I got to be honest with you. I don't see it at all. He's got horrible hands. He can't run the floor. He's got no lift. I, I just, he's not, he's not going to be a, a rim protector. So miss me with leading the G League and rebounding. I, I am, what about the kid? What was the kid's name? Reggie Perry. Towards the end of summer league, Reggie Perry started to eat his minutes, completely outperformed him, completely outperformed him. I don't, to me, it's just a really bad look because it looks like some sort of nepotism or favoritism within the organization. And then you see Nick Kerr has been named the new coach for the Santa Cruz team. And you can, people can swear up and down, oh, they've earned this and all that. I, it, it's not a good look to me. It, it, it was those two things combined that made me think like, oh, not all these decisions are being made based off building the best organization and team. 
that that's my two cents on on those two things. Well, you know, and 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 someone can push back at me if you feel differently, but I also am not naive enough to to think like I understand that's how the world works. You know, I think it's I think you're going to find that in every big money making organization. I just don't know if you want to put people in such prominent roles. And I guess you could argue that that's not one. Um, but you know, you can you can put pe- make people a part of things without them having such influence on the overall impact of things. But the Jace Johnson signing, I know some people are exciting about excited about it. He's I'm a, I'm here to tell you he's not him. He's not him. And if he makes the roster, I don't I don't think it'll help us at all. He's not an NBA big man. He doesn't move well enough. He's got bricks for hands. He doesn't have. I mean, I just I don't even see. I don't. There's no reason to do it. I don't like it. Where's the Reggie Perry kid? I'd rather take a flyer on Harry Giles, who, by the way, I think is still two way eligible. He's played that little in the league. Maybe they could add him as a two way guy. And so, yeah, those are my thoughts on these workouts and the, the, the latest Warriors news. I know it's off season. This is the, the, the low of the off season. So not a lot to talk about, but I wanted to check in with y'all. Let me know in the comments who you would like out of all these workouts as that potential last roster spot. And uh, as always, hit that like, share, and subscribe. I'm out, y'all.